Hello and welcome to this stunning post-glacial landscape that we call the Lake District National Park. Welcome to episode 4 of Glaciation of the Lake District. In the previous episodes we've looked at how erosion has shaped the Lake District, making these huge U-shaped valleys that I find myself in here, the pyramidal peaks and the erect behind me up in the mountain in the distance. But the glaciers don't just erode, they deposit material as well. So in this episode we're going to look at exactly what happens when the glacier melts and drops all the debris that it's been picking up as it moves down the valley and erodes the valley. The features that it forms are moraines, erratics, and the meltwater will start to form lakes. Let's have a look at these features now, starting with our moraines. So here we are stood on some moraines. There's one behind me, just on my left hand side, this mound of dirt that's sticking out the side of the mountain. Now they don't look too inspiring these things, they're just big piles of dirt. And now, now the glaciation has ended, they've been covered in soil as well. But let's have a look inside one of these moraines of what material that they're made up of. So this is what the inside of our moraines look like. Our moraines now at the surface just look like big mounds covered in turf. But inside it's a different story. Now if this was just part of the valley side, Underneath the soil at the top, you would just see one rock type. But here, there is lots of different types of rock and they're cemented together by a small cement. This is called a breccia and is only found in glaciated areas. Now the rocks that make up this breccia are not found at this point in the valley. They're found over a mile away up in the mountains right at the top of the valley. So how exactly did this get here and form here? The answer to that is our glacier transported it here. So let's have a look now, up in the mountains, up in the quarry, of where this material came from. So we've moved up from the valley floor and we're up high in the mountains now, hundreds of metres above the valley floor, up to the mountain peaks behind me. This is where our glacier would have originated and this is also where the moraine that was down on the valley floor would have originated. So this is our quarry. We've looked at one of these in previous episodes and how they're formed. So our glacier would have formed in the bottom of the quarry, but above the glacier is where our moraines would have started life. So our glacier would have formed in the Ice Age when temperatures were much colder than they are today. So in these temperatures, when precipitation fell from the sky and fell into the cracks in the jagged peak behind me, they would have frozen overnight when temperatures dropped to way below freezing. When they freeze, they expand. So when water freezes, it expands into ice. This would have made them cracks in the mountain bigger. This process would repeat over time until the crack got so big that the material would break off the side of the mountain. When it broke off the side of the mountain, it would fall onto the glacier itself. So then the glacier could pick this material up and transport it down the river valley and then deposit it in the moraine. But this isn't the only way that moraine makes its way down the valley. The glacier can pick moraine up from the ground itself by plucking as well, freezing around loose pieces of rock and picking them up and transporting them down the glacial valley. So we've now looked at where the material comes from, up here in the mountains, in the quarry. But now we need to look at the different transportational techniques that the glacier uses to transport this material from up here in the mountains down into the main U-shaped valley. So we know that our glacier erodes the river valley and turns it into a U-shaped glacial valley. But all this material that used to form the valley itself needs to have gone somewhere. The mode of transport that moved this material was the glacier itself. So the glacier can transport this eroded material and pick it up. There are three different ways it does this. 
Now, the material that's above the glacier that gets weathered away by freeze fall weathering on the valley sides will fall down and onto the top of the glacier. Now, this will be transported on top of the glacier, and that mode of transport is called supraglacial transport. This is transport on top of the glacier. Now, some of this material will fall down the crevasses and down the streams that flow through the glacier itself, and these will be transported by N glacial transport. That is transport within the glacier itself. The final mode of transport that glacier transports material by is subglacial transport. This is at the bottom of the glacier. So any material that is picked up by plucking is transported in this way. Now when this material makes its way to the edges of the glacier and the glacier starts to melt, it starts to be deposited as moraine. There are different types of moraine that a glacier can make. At the sides of the glacier, you can have lateral moraine deposited. At the very end of the glacier, at its furthest extent, you would find the terminal moraine. And as the glacier starts to retreat, you will start to get mounds of recessional moraine because the glacier is receding back up the valley. Now these types of moraine all occur within the Lake District itself. Let's go and have a look at these moraines in a bit more detail. So we're here right up at the head of the U-shaped valley, looking east towards Windermere. Now here, we're gonna look at our first type of moraine, and it's the moraine that's running down the valley sides to my right. You can see the valley sides are very steep, almost vertical, and you get about halfway down, and there's a ridge that sticks out. Now that ridge isn't bedrock. That is our moraine that has been deposited by our glacier. Now, when the glacier was in contact with the valley sides, there was a high amount of friction here. That meant that at the sides, the glacier slowed down and lost energy. If the glacier is losing energy, it's going to start to deposit material, and it would deposit the lateral moraine. Over time, these ridges would build up and build up and build up until they stuck out from the valley sides, like you can see here. Once the glacier is melted completely, you can see that there is a ridge that now sticks out from the side of the valley, and that's our lateral moraine. They would have run parallel to the glacier all the way down the valley sides until the end of the glacier at its terminus. So that's our first type of moraine, that's our lateral moraine. Let's now head down to the valley floor where we can see these large ridges that are crossing the valley itself. They are our recessional moraine. Let's go and have a look at them now. So here we find ourselves on our recessional moraine. So there's a ridge behind me that runs from the valley side and across the main valley floor. Now seasonally, as the glacier is retreating at the end of the ice age, it will retreat in different stages. In the summer months, as we're coming out of the ice age, the glacier will melt and retreat back up the valley. In the winter months, when the temperature drops, it would stop and stay stationary at one point on the valley floor. When it stops at that one point, it will deposit all the material at that point for the winter months. That would build up a ridge of moraine, known as your recessional moraine because our glacier is receding up the valley. You can see these recessional moraines dotted along the valley floor behind me. Where the walls are built in the farmer's fields, them walls are on raised up bits of land, them ridges. They're built on our recessional moraines, where our glacier would have stopped as it was receding up the valley seasonally. So here we are at our third type of moraine. So this third type of moraine is our ground moraine. So we're in the middle of the U-shaped valley, but we're looking east this time, looking towards the end of the glacier, not towards the beginning of the glacier. Now we're in the Misfit stream, which now flows through the middle of the valley. But if we look in the banks of this Misfit stream and the surrounding rubble in the stream bed, this is our third type of moraine. This is our ground moraine. 
Now this valley would have been deeper than it is today in the glacier times. Because the, below us, the glacier would have scooped out the base of this U-shaped valley and it would be curved all the way to the middle. If you look behind me, the valley floor is flat now. So it's been infilled by something. So as the glacier was retreating at the end of the ice age, it was dropping all of the material it was carrying. And this material would fill in the valley floor. This is our ground moraine. But not only is this a good location to look at our ground moraine, we can see our previous two moraines at a distance. We can see on my left, on the valley sides, you can see ridges of moraine sticking out of the valley sides. They would be our lateral moraine that we looked at first. Directly behind me, across the valley floor, there is a ridge that almost crosses the entire valley floor. That would be a recessional moraine that happened when the glacier was receding. There is one more type of moraine that we cannot really see in this valley because it's all the way down the valley by Lake Windermere. That is our terminal moraine, and that is the moraine that was at the very end of the glacier in the peak of the ice age, when the glacier was at its longest. Let's now have a look at that in a bit more detail in some slides. So this is our final moraine, this is our terminal moraine. Now from our diagram on the right here, you can see our terminal moraine is the furthest moraine down the valley itself. Because it's the furthest extent that the glacier reached during the peak of the Ice Age. So when the Ice Age was at its coldest, the glacier would have been its longest, and therefore at the end of it, it would be depositing a large amount of material building up all the time to form our terminal moraine. Now this diagram shows what it might have looked like, but we do have glaciers left today on the Earth in alpine areas, such as Switzerland. And let's have a look at one of these terminal moraines that's been built at the moment. So here we have the mountain range in the Alps, and this is the Swiss Alps. We've got our glacier that is coming down from the pyramidal peaks on the left hand side of the picture, and it goes down into the U-shaped valley. Now this glacier has receded, but at one point it would have reached the terminal moraine where the Red Arrow is. Seasonally it would have gone backwards and forwards to the Red Arrow building up more and more moraine. This would build up to a large ridge that you can see in the diagram here. And you can see away from the terminal moraine, curving round to the valley sides, you can see the terminal moraine actually joins up with the lateral moraines down the valley sides itself. So this is a terminal moraine that's only just been recently built during the Swiss Alps. But let's have a look at terminal moraine in the Lake District. The area that we're concentrating on. So here you can still see the curved structure of our terminal moraine, however it looks a lot different to the one in the previous picture. Because this formed thousands of years ago, it's had time for soil to be laid on top of this terminal moraine, and then grass and shrubs to grow on this soil. However you can tell it's a terminal moraine because it's at the end of our valley, and also it's a raised ridge. If you were to slice through this moraine as well, it would be made up of our glacial till, our breccia, lots of little bits of rock cemented together. So that's it for our moraines, but we still have one more depositional feature to look at. These are wide boulders that are found on the bottom of our U-shaped valleys, and they're known as erratics. Let's have a look at those now. So this is our last depositional feature. This is what we call an erratic. An erratic is a large boulder of rock that is completely different to its surrounding rock. So this rock here is made out of a completely different material to the surrounding rock around me. So it must have got here by a different mode of transport. It can't have been made here millions of years ago. It must have been transported here by something. And what's transported our erratic had to have a high amount of energy. Now this mode of transport would have been our glacier. So this erratic here is made out of the same material as the mountain peaks behind me. So thousands of years ago, this would have been weathered by freeze fall weathering on the top of our mountain peak, and then would have fallen on top of our glacier during the ice age. 
It would then be transported by supraglacial transport on top of the glacier down the valley until the glacier ran out of energy and started depositing material. Now we're in line with some recessional moraines here. So this would have been deposited at the same time as these recessional moraines at the end of the ice age. The glacier would have been melting and losing energy, so it wouldn't have no longer been able to carry this large boulder. So would it have dropped it immediately where it was. So it's dropped it in an area where it's made out of a completely different material as its surroundings, forming this erratic feature that I'm sat on. And there's lots of erratics around me that would have been deposited at a similar time. So that's it for our de depositional features that are formed by our glacier. However, we're missing one thing that happened during the glaciation. At the end of the glaciation, the glaciers would have melted. So where would have all this meltwater gone to? It's got to have gone, gone somewhere. So where all this meltwater did, went to, it would drain into the lowest point in our U-shaped valleys. And these lowest points would be our ribbon lakes. Let's go and have a look at them now. At the end of the ice age, the glaciers would have all melted. Now this would have created a whole lot of meltwater and it would have had to drain somewhere. So where it drained was into the lowest points of the U-shaped valleys. The glaciers, when they were eroding the U-shaped valleys, would have eroded large hollows in the base of most of the U-shaped valleys. When the glaciers melted, the water would have drained into these hollows. Behind me is the result of this water draining into the hollows. This is Ulls water, so there's a lake in the Lake District now. And this is a ribbon lake. So the glaciers would have melted, the meltwater drained into the lowest point, which would have been Ulls water and formed Ulls water lake. Now these lakes are still present today as the Lake District is a very wet climate. The northwest of England is one of the wettest climates in the UK. So when it rains up in the mountains of the Lake District, the rainwater drains down the valley sides and will end up in the lakes, still making sure they're here today. So that's it for this episode. Let's now move on for a summary of this final episode. So we've come to the end of the series. I want a fitting location to have our end in Greasedale Valley. We can see in this valley pretty much everything that we've looked at in these four episodes. You've got the main U-shaped valley itself. And if you follow the U-shaped valley up, you've got the quarry at the end of the valley up in the mountains. On the valley sides, you have erects, you have pyramidal peaks. You also have some hanging valleys and some truncated spur features. Down on the valley floor itself, we've got our misfit stream and we've got our different types of moraine. The only thing missing is that we don't have our ribbon lake where all the water drained after the glaciers melted. So thank you very much for joining me in this series. I hope that you have learned something new about how this wonderful landscape formed up here in the Lake District. If you do have an opportunity to come up here to the lakes, I do recommend it. The landscape is fantastic. So like I said, thank you very much for joining me and I will be making some more series soon. So I hope you can join me for them too. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.